Hi there, it's Craig here, uh, and it's time for another FAQ Frequently Asked Questions video. Just a, just a few questions I get asked a lot here. Uh, got to do this, and um, I got some more brewing videos coming up, so don't worry. Okay, uh, but before we get started, I wanted to show you this is a oh, it's an English bitter, a Cooper's English bitter, and. Uh, Wow, this stuff is so good. I can't believe it. Look at this. look at that. A nice velvety head on it. It's clear. It's dark. And I've been drinking these for a little while and they're almost gone unfortunately, but they're so good, man. I can't believe that I can make beer like this out of a can. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to go into it. It's just, I, all I'm saying is it, it's absolutely amazing. It's so good. It's so good. I can't believe it. But we won't, we won't start on the whole all grain versus kit thing. This, it, it's just really good. That's all. So it is possible to make excellent beer out of a, out of a kit. Okay, let's get to the questions. I have six questions here. I'm going to read them to you first, and then we'll go through them. Okay? Uh, how much sugar or honey or dry malt extract should I add to my beer? If you're using a combination of sugar and dry malt, or just dry malt, or honey, or whatever, how much? Okay? Sanitizers, whether to get the non-rinse ones or the rinse ones, the ones you have to rinse off, and what does rinsing your equipment with water contaminate it? That's a good one. We gotta get that. I can't wait to talk about that. Where to get supplies? Okay, your airlock has stopped prematurely. Cover that. Secondary fermentation, two-stage fermentation, is it necessary? And finally, keeping it out of the sun. That one I can just tell you right now. Keep your beer out of the sun. Keep your fermenter out of the sun. Keep your carboy out of the sun. Keep your bottles out of the sun. Your beer, your your bottle when there's beer in them. Sun is is got ultraviolet rays. It will damage your beer. It will. I don't know what it does to it. Maybe somebody can post a comment on what actually happens. But if you have your beer in the sun, it tastes like crap. It's go. It goes skunky. All right. Let's let's start with um, how much sugar to put in. You know, if you're using dry malt extract or honey, uh, which I'll do a video on the honey thing, using honey in your beer, um, whatever, how much do you put in? Well, I recommend one kilogram of sugar to start with, and then add some at the end, at the end of before you pitch your yeast. Like when you're just before you put your yeast, pitch your yeast in, take a hydrometer, hydrometer, ugh, hydrometer reading, and see if you need to add a little more sugar. Um, 1.045 is a good reading to aim for, but give or take a few. Um, that'll give you about 5% alcohol, something like that. If it's lower than 1.040, you definitely want to add something more, some more sugar to it, uh, unless you want a really weak beer. Um, and uh, so, but if you're using honey, uh, again, one kilogram during the boil or during when you're, you're heat your water up and you get everything mixed together, um, and then add your cold water to get it up to level, Take a test. If it's not high enough, add some sugar. The sugar's really the only thing I would add when it's at, when your wort is at room temperature because it will dissolve easily. If you try adding more honey or more dry malt at that stage, I don't know how it would dissolve if it would dissolve very well. Uh, that's something that I'd have to experiment with. So it's safe to, for me to just say if you need a little extra kick on your batch at the end when you before you pitch your yeast, just add a couple of two cups of sugar. That'll bring you up to snuff. Just keep that sugar handy and add one kilogram of whatever fermentable thing you're going to put in. And at the end, before you put your yeast in, take a measurement and decide whether you want to add some sugar just to bring things up to, to the level you want. Okay? Secondary fermentation. One second. Single stage fermentation is when you put everything in your fermenter, add your yeast, cover it up, put your airlock on, you let it ferment for about seven days, and you bottle it. 
Okay, that's single stage. Dual stage is when you let it ferment for seven days and then you rack it into a carboy. You siphon it into a carboy and let it sit for two weeks. That's two stage. I'm getting asked if that's necessary. What's my opinion on that? Okay, well I don't do two stage. I have done a two stage batch and I didn't notice any difference in the quality of the beer at all. It was exactly the same. Uh, the advantage to doing it two stage is that what happens is when it's sitting in the carboy in the second stage, um, it, it'll clear a little bit more. And so that when you bottle it, you'll have less sediment in the bottom of your bottles. Um, which, which is, you know, if you want to drink it out of the bottle, I guess that's, a, that's an issue. But you should, I should never drink beer out of a bottle. Beer is like wine. It's supposed to be, you're supposed to be able to get the, you know, the, 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 the scent of it plus the taste of it combined is what gives you your flavor. You know, you, if you, you know, it's like eating with your nose plug. If you drink it out of a bottle, you're not getting the full aroma and everything out of it. Just drink it out of a glass, you get the full flavor. So I should always pour your beer anyway. Um, less sediment if you do two stage, that's about it. Uh, it you, you delay your, your beer by two weeks by doing that. So I don't think it's worth it. Unless your kit specifically requires you for some reason to do that, I wouldn't bother. Uh, it's it. I, I've never had to do it. I mean, I've done it just to just to try it, uh, but it didn't make any difference for me. Your beer is going to clear in the bottles anyway. It will clear in the bottles qu actually faster than it will clear in a huge carboy. And really, what you're doing is you're you're doing your secondary fermentation in your bottles anyway. Now, in a situation where you are doing a keg, where you were kegging your beer. In other words, you have a, a pressurized uh, or a, a keg with the CO2 cylinder, and you're going to put your beer in there and psh, pressurize it, carbonate it, and drink it, you know, right away. Then you would want to do the two-stage method because you want it to go in there clear. That's when the two-stage stage method is handy because, again, you want your beer to be clear going into the keg, and I think that's when you would want to do that. So, um, but if you're not using a keg, if you're just going into bottles, you don't need two-stage. Just do the single. It's it's fine. Okay, uh, your airlock has stopped. Airlock has stopped bubbling. Like it's three days into your fermentation, and your there's no more bloop, bloop, bloop coming out of your airlock. More than likely, this is just you don't have a good seal in your fermenter, and there's another way for air to get out. So the, the airlock's not receiving as much action as it normally would. Um, I'm going to do an entire video on airlocks and how to, you know, what to do if there if there's this happens and if you don't have a good seal in your fermenter, what to do and how to check it and so forth. But I would probably just leave leave it alone for the seven days uh, and then test it at the end to see if it's fermented. Uh, there are things you can check other than the airlock. You shouldn't rely on your airlock unless you know that you you've got a good seal in your fermenter. Um, Lift up the lid and check, look in and see if there's bubbling and fizzing going on in there. Um, take a hydrometer test to see if it's uh, what if it's finished. It probably won't be finished after three days, but uh, you never know. It has happened. It's, it's sometimes you get things go crazy in there if the temperature's high enough and it just it ferments out, right? Um, but so take a hydrometer test, read it. If it's not ready to bottle yet. Uh, if it's if it's above 1.010, put it back, put the lid back on, leave it for a couple more days, take the lid back off, do another reading, uh, get in and get out as quick as you can. Don't yeah, I mean don't sit there and breathe into it and sneeze in it or anything like that, and uh, and and see what happens if it's if it's progressively getting lower and lower reading, then just put the lid on and leave it, leave it alone. It's it's just obviously a leak somewhere and the air is getting out and but just leave it alone. When your reading gets down to 1.010 or lower bottle it because what that means is that if you do have a leak in your air in your fermenter or your airlock is leaking or something then when fermentation stops there's no longer that outward push of air to be coming out of your vessel so 
you might actually risk some something getting in. So as long as there's fermentation going on, there's always this positive pressure of pushing out out of whatever leak you've got or your airlock, you know. Uh, but when fermentation is finished, then you don't have that anymore. And if you do have a leak somewhere, you'll get, you're going to want to bottle it immediately so that you don't have contamination. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'm going to do an entire video on this subject, so don't don't panic. And where, finally, where do, um, oh, where, where do you get the, uh, your beer supplies? Where can I get my bottles? Where can I get my malt extract, my, you know, whatever? This is one question I cannot answer for you. I mean, if you live on the other side of the world, there's no good me telling you where I get my supplies uh, because you're not going to be able to get it there. I get my stuff from a shop three blocks away from me, and I've never had to venture any further than that. So... You know, I really don't know where you're going to get your supplies from because it depends on where you live, and you know what you, what country you live in and where you live. I mean, you can order them online. You can find a place around your town that sells it. You know, that's that's something that I just don't know. Um, if you don't have a shop nearby, then you're going to have to do a Google Google search, <laughs> and uh, uh, and find out where you can get them uh, ordered and delivered to you. Okay, and the last thing. What kind of sanitizer should I use, and should I use a non-rinse sanitizer, or one that you have to rinse off? The non-rinse sanitizers are great. I mean, you know, it's nice to have a spray bottle around. You can just spray down a spoon or a hydrometer or something like that. <laughs> Drop it in your, your beer and, and do whatever you're going to do. Um, but those things have to, they take 30 seconds to sanitize. And I think even when they tell you to sanitize your, your, your buckets and your, your fermenters and stuff and your equipment, to fill it up with the sanitizer and put everything in and let it sit for an amount of time. I don't know what that is, half an hour or something like that. Um, and that's a lot of sanitizer. And then what do you do? You pour it down the drain or something like that. You know, you can't reuse it. So I like the contact sanitizers, like sodium metabisulfite, because they kill everything, bam, right? As soon as it touches it, it's dead. Right? But you do have to rinse those off because they'll kill your yeast as well. I mean, they kill everything. So you rinse them off with tap water. Now, the, the comment I get, I've gotten several times, and I, is, is that when you rinse your, your equipment, you're, you're recontaminating it with the tap water. Guys, you're using tap water to make your beer. You've got four gallons of tap water in your fermenter there. If you're going to pollute your beer, you've already done it. You know, it's... You're not going to pollute your your equipment by rinsing it with tap water, and I use hot hot water when I rinse my my equipment out. So there's an extra little level of of protection right there. Um, I run my hot water for about two three minutes, turn it off. My hot water kicks in, it gets everything nice and hot, and then I do my sanitizing. And by then the water is like steaming hot. So you're not going to contaminate your equipment by by rinsing it off with with water because you're using the same water to make your beer. Oh, okay. I need a I need a little motion lotion here. Oh, oh that's okay. Hold up. I got one more question here. I didn't mention at the beginning. I just got an uh, 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 an email just now, and I forgot about this. I've had this question before. Plastic bottles. Okay, these are 750 milliliter bottles. But you can use smaller ones. Plastic versus glass. Now, I, I'm going to start by saying that, I mean, I've had brewing videos up here for over two years, and, I'm, and there's been some criticizing some some of my methods and some of the things, the way I do things. One of the things I laughed at was because I use plastic bottles, which I don't really understand. I never really understood why that would be such a problem. Um, some of the uh, major beer uh, retailers now are switching to plastic bottles. So uh, laugh at them if you want to laugh at somebody. I mean, they're doing it now, too. My, my opinion is that, um, and it's not just an opinion, I think it's pretty true, that plastic bottles, they, you know, they, they can, um, if they get scratched or, you know, something um, damaged inside, there can, bacteria can hide inside there where there's a, like a scratch or something. Of, but well, how's that going to ever happen? When are you going to go in there with a, something and scratch the inside of your bottle? I mean, if you clean them as soon as you use them, or at least the next day after you pour your beer, I mean, if you're having a party and you want to clean bottles, 
just get to them as soon as you can. Clean them out, rinse them off with good hot water. Do that, put, get that little bottle, wash, bottle washer I have and get them a good rinse and uh, put them away. And, and so as long as they're kept clean, they're fine. Um, and then sanitize them before you use them and uh, rinse them and they're, they're fine. I've been using the same plastic bottles. I've got some plastic bottles over there that I've been using for, Jesus, 10 years. And every once in a while, I give them a good, a good wash in the dishwasher or in a bleach bath, and uh, I rinse them off well, and I use them, and they, they, they serve me very well. Uh, you know, there's an advantage to using plastic bottles. For one thing, they're lighter, um, and they don't uh, explode. Even if you freeze a beer, if you accidentally leave a beer in the freezer, they don't explode. They don't burst like glass bottles do because they have a, a tendency to expand. Uh, the way they're designed, they've got these uh, divots in the bottom and they're just they're flexible so they can expand and bloat a little bit if they need to if you get a little extra fermentation or if you freeze your beer by accident. Um, I've had, I used to use glass bottles, I've had them explode. They don't go all over the room but you end up with uh, beer all over the place and glass all over the place. Um, I did do a batch once, once where several of them exploded with glass bottles and I lost several beers um, just because of maybe I put a little too much bottling sugar in. Glass has a threshold. It can only hold so much and then bang, it gives off, you know, it gives up. Whereas plastic, it can expand. The other um, good thing about plastic bottles is what I noticed when I use glass bottles because I prime, uh, I, I prime my bottles each with a half a teaspoon of sugar so that the beer can go in there and ferment in a sealed environment and carbonate, right? Uh, what I noticed with the glass bottles is, is less you get the exact same amount of sugar in each bottle, you get different amounts of carbonation from beer to beer. With the plastic bottles, that doesn't happen because the plastic expands a little bit in each bottle, it provides kind of an equilibrium, like an equalizing um, effect where if one bottle's got a little more sugar in it than the other, then the, pl the plastic's going to compensate it by expanding a little bit more and you're going to get an even carbonation in every single bottle. And that's one of the main things I've noticed about using plastic bottles is every beer tastes exactly the same because you've got that extra little give and take thing there so that if you put a little, dump a little too much sugar in one of your bottles, the plastic's just going to make up for it by expanding. It's not going to explode, and it's going to taste the same as all the other beers. So I'm a fan of plastic bottles. However, when it comes to carboys, I like glass. Because I make wine too, right? So uh, I have to have carboys around. And I like glass because it's easier to uh, clean. It's not, it doesn't absorb anything. That's the only thing about plastic that you have to watch is that it does absorb odors, flavors, whatever. So if you leave half a beer sitting like that in a bottle overnight or for a few days and it goes all bad and nasty, uh, the plastic can absorb that flavor and it could actually affect the taste of your next beer. So just keep it clean. Keep the plastic clean and uh, you'll have no problem with it. That's it. I hope that helps, and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Take care.